Video number one, what specifically does Netanyahu plan to do in Israel? By the way, I'm intentionally trying to offer you guys different sources across the world. So today we're talking about Israel, so I'm going to give you Israeli sources as well. A lot of YouTubers don't do that. They give you American sources talking about Israeli events or events going on in China or Iran or some countries in like say Central African Republic or something like that. So I'm trying to diversify that intentionally to try to diversify people's knowledge about what's actually happening in the countries that we're discussing. Anyway, so this is going to be according to the Times of Israel. So this is kind of more of a, a right, kind of, yeah, more of a right Israeli uh, newspaper. So if there's any Israelis that disagree, feel free to say it. I was in Israel for a period of time and uh, several months, and this was kind of the general consensus. Okay, so this is what Netanyahu is saying about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict right now. Quote, Israel will have overall security responsibility over the Gaza Strip for an indefinite period after the war against Hamas ends. He's saying specifically that Israel will have an indefinite security responsibility in Gaza, which requires obviously an occupation. Oopsie, how is he gonna do that? Well, one of the ideas that he had stated is specifically to create security zones in the South where quote unquote civilians would be able to go and the rest would be considered combatants. But wait a second, he's bombing the security zones of the South. So the idea with the Israelis is they're sectioning off the Palestinian territories. This is going to be kind of common sense to some of you guys because you've been following it. So bear with me. I'm going to talk about this for a second and then kind of move on. But essentially, Israel is sectioning off different Palestinian land. They're going from the north. They're going to work their way to the south. And they're trying to create these quote unquote safe zones to clear out more areas so there's less people involved. So they can, it essentially makes their life easier. But they're already creating more catastrophes in the south. Oopsie poopsie. Now here's what I really wanna talk about. How exactly would you do that? Because you can't just simply occupy all that territory. There's 2.2-ish million Palestinians. So here's a funny story for you guys, and this is where we're gonna get in the crux of the issue. In order to occupy land, and maybe I should clip this because I want people to actually hear this part. In order to occupy the land, typically what happens is you have one soldier per 40 civilians. This has been incorporated all the way back in the first 18 months the U.S. occupied Germany back in World War II. There is, what, 400,000 yeah, 400, uh, Americans in that area. And then that was tested later on in 1999 in Kosovo. I have my little notes here. 50,000 troops for a population of 2 million. Then we tried to extend that a little bit in Iraq. We tried one soldier per 160 civilians. That was an abysmal failure. We didn't have enough troops in that area. We did that intentionally to try to invade more countries at the same time. Because that was a failure, we resorted to more violent means to be able to take over countries because we couldn't militarily occupy them. And so what we, what we know specifically about Israel is if they're following the gold standard, which is essentially consistent across all militaries right now, they would need approximately 55,000 soldiers in Gaza. Now, an individual might go ahead and look at the Israeli military and note, oh, wait a second here. They have quite a bit. They have 170 active duty personnel. That's enough people, right? No. No, because not everybody, you're not going to take, fa like, I was going to say Father John. I guess that would be probably, what, a minister? So you wouldn't take him anyway. You wouldn't take, like, you know, Jeffrey the cook over here. You're not going to throw him in there, right? You're not going to throw all the logistics personnel in there as well. What you're specifically discussing is who exactly are the occupiers that are going to be going in that country? Who are the direct action individuals? Direct support. So that would be the infantry and infantry-esque individuals as well. They account for approximately 10 to 20% of the military. So in Israel, that would be roughly 35,000-ish individuals and they need 55,000, and that's just in Gaza. That's not including the West Bank. If you add the West Bank on top of that, it's about 75,000 extra folks, not including if they have to occupy Southern Lebanon or parts of Syria. What happens then? They don't have the personnel. Yes, you have reservists, but you can't rely on the reservists forever. They're not gonna be reservists at that point. So here's where we get to really interesting stuff. They have a couple different options here, and this is relevant because by understanding this, we know how the U.S. is going to be tied into this. Do you see kind of, 
you see the issue that's happening already? So here it is. Number one, they could deploy their reserves indefinitely by increasing the amount of time that they have to stay in the military, but that is going to be impressively unpopular for the population. They're not gonna wanna do that, rightfully so. You're not gonna wanna send your, say, 18-year-old daughter or, or son out into the battlefield and say, oh yeah, sorry, I know it was X amount of time and now we're gonna double the amount of time in order to increase the amount of troop levels. That's not gonna be popular for an individual like Netanyahu who's already notoriously unpopular, right? So that's likely not going to happen. Oopsie poopsie, what's going to happen next? Number two, displace and unalive more Palestinians. They're already working on that, but in order to essentially help out their, their situation in terms of population, they're gonna have to put in you know, triple overtime in order to make that happen. And that's just not going to happen within the next handful of months, right? They're unaliving, I'm saying unaliving because the algorithms and so on, they're unaliving a lot of individuals, of course. But in order to actually increase this ratio of troops to civilians, that's just not going to happen. That's, they don't have enough uh, individuals to ensure, or firepower to ensure that this happens. And a mass, mass uh, Palestinian exodus is likely not going to happen within the next, say, a couple weeks. So what is the last situation? Well, let's think here. There's already a military that has a secret military base there. They already account for approximately 16 to 20 percent, depending on the year of the Israel's entire military budget, and they've already tried to start a war with Iran. You see where I'm going with this? Israel is creating a policy to occupy Gaza indefinitely, knowing they don't have the amount of troops that are required to occupy that territory. They're also uninterested in peacekeepers, they've stated publicly. So in order for them to be able to successfully deploy this type of a strategy, they are reliant on an external source of troops. Now, let me ask you guys this. Did the American people vote on this? Are we at all interested other than the government in trying to ensure that this happens? No. Nope. Not at all. Do you think somebody from Arkansas should try to, I don't know, jump in the middle of a conflict in an area where they might not be able to point it out on the map. And that's not against art people from Arkansas, by the way. I can say that in Texas or Florida or Oregon or California or wherever. You understand the point that I'm trying to prove. And also, by the way, while we're discussing troop numbers, it is absolutely vital for me to tell you that we Americans don't have the amount of troops necessary to occupy Iran. Oopsie poopsie, I bet you didn't know that. No slight on you. It's because it's not talked about in the media. We always discuss whether we're going to do X or Y or Z. We have never, never discussed whether or not we actually have the capacity to actually do that. We do not have the capacity for that. So what I'm trying to say is we are absolutely overextending ourselves to the fullest capacity. And I don't think any Americans should die for a policy for a government who is enacting legislature, the Israeli government, who is enacting military policies that involve us without our say. I care about you guys and I care about my family, right? Who voted for this? So just watch this play out, understand what is happening, and just know the consequences of what we're about to see. That is the literal point.